Good morning. It's Monday. Uh, it is 20 past nine. I'm yet again still half asleep. Um, I've got to go and check these mole traps. Uh, as if you've seen previous films, you'll know that Big in the Country visited here on Saturday uh, with a little mini mole catcher. And we went off and set some mole traps. Yesterday, we checked those six mole traps that we'd set and it was purely a learning exercise really for, for Big in the Country to see how the duffer's trap works. We checked those six traps yesterday and caught two moles. Um, so today I'm just gonna go off and check them again. Uh, we had one trap blocked yesterday that we know of. Um, so I have take with me today a Talpex to go in there if that's blocked again. And I've got my little mini probe with me. I'm also going to take the tripod with me and hopefully uh, I'll set the camera up so then you can see me set the trap. Um, not giving too much away on YouTube, but you'll be able to see how I set a Talpex trap. Um, probably three years since I've set one of these because uh, I've so rarely used them. Um, so off we go. Well, see you. The river's dropped a bit, which is quite nice, a bit easier on the wellies. <laughs> here we go then, first trap. Caught one here yesterday. See if we've got anything. Quite a nice little run this was. Now, as I expected, the trap hasn't sprung. We'll leave him exactly where he is and go on to the next. Here we go, approaching trap number two. I'm gonna push on a bit here because uh, it's just about to absolutely chuck down with rain. Don't particularly want my phone to get drowned out. I don't particularly want to get wet. I've got to squeeze in a 10 hour shift at work today. And again, nothing caught in there. So uh, here we go then. We've got trap numbers three and four up there in the corner, one of which was blocked. And then over there, we've got two more that Biggie set, so we'll check those as well. Onwards and upwards. Trap number three. And again, it's sprung. And again, it's sprung from the same direction. What I'll do is I'll set the tripod up, take this one out of the ground. If we haven't caught one, I'll whack the old tail packs in and you can see it going in. Okay, I'm not sure what that picture's like. Uh, you can't really see properly. Trap's coming out. Oh, hello. We have our mole. Now this is the trap that I just shoved back in the ground yesterday. And I said that one of the problems I thought there might be with it is there was a little bit of a drop on this end of the trap, which meant that the trap probably wasn't sitting exactly aligned correctly in the tunnel. We've now caught our mole a little bit further back than I would like to see, but there we are, we've caught him nonetheless. So I'll empty this trap out, whack it back in the ground. You can watch me do that for a minute. It's a big pit right in the middle of the run. <laughs> so I'll try and flatten that out a little bit, line the run up properly. Nice, quite nice having a long tube on this little handheld uh, probe I've got um, because it gets you further up the tunnel so you can really feel which direction the tunnel's going in and try and smooth it out and make it all nice and ready for the trap. So that's that bit done. No grass in there. I don't like to see grass in mold runs. Get this little fella out and reset the trap. There we go, trap's going in. Oh, I always put one end in first and work the trap in as tight a hole as I can get in there so then there's very little disturbance. I'm not gonna give tutorials on mole trapping. Uh, people have asked for it, but I'm not going to. I'm happy to answer individual questions as they come up. But generally speaking, my belief is that there's too many people catching moles for too little money and it's screwing it up for the real pros out there. But anyway, traps reset. There's our little fella. He can go in my pocket. Right. Clean that up. And we'll move on to trap number four. Okay, trap number four. And again, as you can see there, the trap hasn't sprung, so I'm not gonna disturb it. That can stay exactly where it is. Let's go and have a look at these two that Biggie set. Uh, I might lift these whether they've gone off or not, just to see, because they might be plugged and not gone off. So we'll have a look and see in a minute. Okay, I can feel the excitement building for Biggie. 
trap number five. This is one that he set, and again, it hasn't gone off. There's a number of reasons that could have happened. What we'll do is I'll lift it a minute and have a look. Again, hopefully you can see that. Just move the pin out of the way a minute. Let's have a little look and see what we've got in here. Right, I can see just by lifting it that far that the trap is not plugged. Okay, now if that, if that run was in use and we disturbed it because Biggie was smoking a cigar at the time or something else or the trap wouldn't set properly, that trap would be plugged with soil. It's not. I'm not going to lift it right out of the ground because as I said repeatedly, the less disturbance you make the better. Um, it's clear trap. So what that's telling me is that there aren't any moles using this run. So that's why he hasn't caught a mole. We've got one more trap to check. The last one of Biggie's ones. So we'll move on and down and do that one as well. I'll lift that one as well so then you can see whether there's anything in there. Okay, we're back. Uh, this is trap number six. Again, trap hasn't gone off. So I'm gonna just quickly lift it and have a look. That's not plugged. I can usually tell by looking at the ends that's not plugged. So again, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. What's happened here is that these two traps that Biggie set, unfortunately, he happened to set on two runs that are, haven't been used. Doesn't mean they won't be used because clearly they're nice clear runs and they could be used at any stage. So I'm going to leave them in place. It's unfortunate these things happen, um, but it's through no fault of his own. It's not because he can't set a duffer's trap. It's not because he smoked a cigar while he was doing it. It is purely that there's no mole used this tunnel. Moles do not use all of their tunnels every day. Uh, there's a well-known fact that, or suspected fact, that moles run their tunnels every four hours or so um, to look for food. That's because they've got such a fast metabolism. One of the things that they won't do is to needlessly run their tunnels. So they'll run their tunnels, fill their bellies. When they're full, they don't need to expend any more energy so they, they go back go back to their nest and have a nice little sleep for a few hours um, these runs here it could be that this territory that these runs are on has been vacated um, it could be that these are traveling runs leading from over the boundary or in the hedge or something uh, leading into a, a, a feeding area that they use occasionally um, if the weather changes we've had a lot of rain recently we're, we're forecasting dry weather although it's very sort of misty, misly rubbish today. Um, if the weather changes, these runs might suddenly be used. So um, all is not lost, and I feel a little bit guilty that we have managed to put, put uh, Biggie's traps into some runs that are in use, because it would have been nice to get him to break his duck with the duffers. Anyway, uh, I need to do something with these dead moles, so we'll do that next. Uh, and then I need to get back and do some domestic rubbish and have a shower and a shave and think about a 10 hour shift at work. So uh, right. I'll see you in a minute. We've got three dead moles out of this field and I've got to do something with them. Um, I could go and get some mole shaped coffins and put them in a nice little wooden box in a nice little mole shroud and bury them in the garden with all funeral rites. I could chuck them over the hedge. I could dig a big hole and bury them. I could put them in the rubbish, which wouldn't technically be legal. Um, or I could do this with them and this is going to wind a few people up, but I'm going to do it anyway. The thing is, when Farmer John comes in here, I want him to be able to see, he says, I want him to be able to see that I'm earning my keep here and that I'm catching the moles that he wants me to catch. So, so, there they are on display shock horror some people are going to be really upset that i've just done that those moles were very dead two of them were dead two days ago um it did it's done them no harm at all what's going to happen to these now is they'll gradually decompose and uh, they'll probably end up with maggots in them the maggots will fall on the floor the birds will eat the maggots farmer john when he comes in the field he's going to see them there he's going to say cool that matt's a good chap he's doing a good job there's a a bit of a movement amongst the country sports world saying we shouldn't do things like this because um, it upsets too many people. Well, sorry, but I don't really give a shit if they're upset. These are dead animals. It's much the same as a butcher's display. I want John to see that I'm doing a good job for him and I'm capable of doing the job. Um, it doesn't harm the moles. The moles were already dead. It doesn't cause them any more pain and suffering. Um, I don't think moles, dead moles, really care about uh, 
uh, their feelings being hurt after they're dead. Um, there's no public rights away here. There's no public access here. We strictly control public access here. If I see somebody walking in these fields, they're out within minutes. Um, so really and truly, I don't give a shit. They're dead, they're hanging, they're on display, and I don't care. Anyway, sorry to end on a bit of a controversial note, uh, but that'll do for today's film. Um, tomorrow's Tuesday. I probably won't check these traps tomorrow. I'll probably leave them until Wednesday when I get a little bit more time because I'm not working on Wednesday. And uh, come and have a little walk and I'll, I'll film it again so then uh, you can see what's what. I might even lift them on Wednesday. I might leave them until Thursday and lift them out on Thursday and get rid of them. Normally I would only check once and then lift um, on a commercial job unless it was particularly bad. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Pheasants are all on the move. Uh, I'm going to get back and uh, have the three S's, as they say, and th start thinking about going to work. Um, I'll quickly edit this film and try and get it up on YouTube at some point today. If it's not on today, I apologise if it doesn't appear until Wednesday. But as I said, with yesterday's film, the internet connection we've got here is very slow, particularly on upload. And uh, a 15 minute film takes around about three hours to upload. Anyway, uh, catch you all again soon. Matt the Rat over and out.